Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash, and today we're going to be taking a look at another RPG developer Bakken DLC, a little bit ahead of its release. And today we're looking at Ultimate Modular Swords. And if I seem a little apprehensive, it's because I'm really not sure what to expect. You see, normally I'm able to kind of test this stuff out and I do a little bit of research so I can be educated for my video presentation. But this time, I kind of didn't have the time and I decided to just go in blind. So you're going to be seeing my reactions in real time here, my first impressions, to access this DLC, which was provided to me because I'm an RPG developer, Bakken DLC ambassador. Thank you so much to Smile Boom for extending the opportunity to me, we go into Game Gallery and we'll access the Ultimate Modular Swords DLC, the project file that comes with this DLC. Some project files, DLC don't have to have project files at all. They can just have stuff that you install into the engine. But most of these DLCs do come with project files to give you clear examples of how stuff should be used and how it actually appears in your game files whenever you're making your own stuff. Other DLC project files are great starting points to create your own content from. Anyways, we're going to get this about restricted editing mode pop up, letting us know we're not really going to be able to edit this because it's a, a read only project file. But we'll go ahead and save it as ultimate modular swords editable. And now I've made my own project file. That's mine. I can edit it and do whatever I want with it. So there and we see that it comes with two maps. And we see <laughs> we see this guy who looks so cool. It kind of looks like he could be in trouble. He's being uh, faced down by three clones. If we start the game, this is where we're going to be starting. So very strange. Looks like we have another map here, 50 by 50. There's nothing on this map. We'll just go back to the original map. But I can tell you what I do know about Ultimate Modular Swords. This is an asset pack that allows you to create your own sword weapons piecemeal by what's included. I don't know how far we're going to get into that today while I present this, but we will test play and we'll take a look at the resources and stuff therein. New game, please. Oh, we're all we're all very depressed. Ultimate modular swords. Hello. He hello. Random probabilities test. Oh, hi. Hi there. Random probabilities. Are these swords being generated kind of in real time? Yeah. I think they are. At the very least, these are all of the assets that come with the engine. You have a rotating view and you have the standard standstill view. It looks like this will probably go on indefinitely while our animations play out changing for us while we're running around. Uh, but I want to point out that what's probably happening here is it's generating a sword by combining hilt, yep, I see it now, tang and blade, separate pieces. Uh, and you can kind of see where it incidentally, one of those pieces stays the same and the other two things change for the random probabilities test that we've got variables here going around. So what's the point of all this is what you're probably wondering. This is so that you can create your own custom swords from the assets that come with this. And then you can just give the swords to your characters like what's happening here. This guy has subgraphics everywhere. He's got two subgraphics on his back, crisscross swords. He's got sub <laughs> he's holding a sword in each hand. He is armed to the teeth. I think we've probably seen enough though. I mean, but if you want, we can we can sit here all day and look at these different swords being generated. How many pieces? How many hilts? How many blades? How many tangs do we really have? How many guards before? And how many possibilities are there? That, that's what I want to know. To get that answer, let's go into resources, 3D stamps, and then we'll go to the ultimate modular swords. It looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight folders. I didn't think about the decals folders being in there too. Yeah, we've got different graphics being applied to these three parts of the sword. Under blade, we have normal and hole. So we've got blades that actually have holes in them, such as this one and this one and this one and this one and some of these blades whoa couldn't see it too well because okay so that's got a particle effect on it and it actually has a sound effect which i'm not i don't have the sound recording on on this right now it's just my voice but that was uh loud and jarring but some of these some of these have particle effects like 
or animations, I should say. This isn't a particle effect. This is an animation going on right now that uh, does not have any sound, for which I am grateful, but it's still really, really cool. All the materials for this stuff are already included. You don't have to deal with 3D modeling or anything like that. Uh, they refer to the parts as blade, guard, and grip. So apologies for not being as much of a sword nerd as I would like. I think I called it the, the handle and the tang. No, the grip, the guard, and the blade. There are a lot more of these than I initially expected there to be just watching the generation test, but I wasn't really counting. I uh, just, just felt like I was seeing some of them, like they were familiar uh, a few times over. Somebody worked really hard to make these beautiful designs for these. And of course, these now being imported into your, your game project don't have to be used as parts of a sword. They could literally be used for anything. You could take this animation and use it for a spell, uh, a magical wall. You could take this stuff and use it for points of interest highlighted on your map. You could take this and use it as an emblem uh, that a chief wears, sort of like a crown on their head in the form of a subgraphic. You could use these for sculptures out in the world. You could magnify them, make their scale like 10, 20 times bigger and place them around. This here, clearly you could take this, move it upside down, place it in your world, increase the size, and you have an enormous magical gate. And that is just uh, some of the ideas I could come up with right off the top of my head for how you could use these in unconventional ways. That's just a little sampling of the grip folder here. And it it's, it's a ton. It's a ton of grips. Just a absolute ton. You've got grips wrapped in chains. You've got grips ornately designed at the very bottom here. You know what? I'm tired of being questionable about, about the parts of the sword. We're going to learn right now. We're here on hollowearthswordworks.wordpress.com, and this is, this is the anatomy of a sword. This is the blade, this part right here, with the fuller being kind of, I guess that would be the center of the blade. Then we have the, um, you gave me the words, now I'm going to say them wrong. The quillion, the killian, here, this seems to be the top part that an opponent's blade would strike if they were aiming for your hand. We have the cutaway, and then we have the grip. There is a grip groove, and there's a pommel. Here, if we go to swordis.com, blog, parts of a sword, we can see Abigail Campbell here has written uh, an excellent guide on what these parts are, the pommel, the grip, the rain guard, the ricasso, the cross guard. This whole thing here is the hilt, and this whole thing here is the blade. So you can stab an opponent driving your blade into them right up to the hilt, and that would, that would mean you're going all the way in with your sword. You can have an ornate pommel, you can have a delicately designed grip, or you can have just a, a ridiculous sword guard, hand guard, cross guard, finger guards, so that you have additional protection, they can't slash at your knuckles, ring guards, knuckle guards. This, this no longer is about the DLC. Let's go back to the DLC. So we have beautifully ornate pommel, and then all of the guards that we talked about under, under the anatomy of the sword, we could probably find examples of them being used here, but mostly these are just going to be really chonky big things that get in the way of the opponent's weapon, and they look really cool, which is the entire point of all of this. We should look at some of these blades. I didn't get enough look at the blades. We have chains wrapped around blades. We have magic evil blades. We have regular sort, sort, short, sword, straight sword blades. We've got pointed ones. We've got ones that are large enough to probably be used as melee weapons, but I'm gonna make another comparison with Final Fantasy XIV here. A lot of the swords in that game are basically weapons that should be, they should be crush damage weapons. They give the Dark Knight a sword and it looks so large from the side. It's just a big hunk of concrete. There's no blade about it. But these are nice and thin. So well, I guess what I'm saying is I like these swords. I think that these, these sword blades have more potential than a lot of the blades that I see in MMOs like Final Fantasy and World of Warcraft. That comparison makes no sense, but uh, you know, I'm making it anyway. We have blades with symbols on them, and if you understand how to take textures and move them into a paint program and edit them, then you can change these symbols to be whatever you want. We've looked at blade, guard, grip. Let's take a look at decals real quick. We've got normal and we've got animated, and they're actually separated by color. So we've got decals here, blue, life and death, wisdom, reborn. I would love to know, Path of Light, what are these based on? Oh, it's a font. 
it's literally, it says path of light, just it's written out. Uh, the proof is right here. Path ends with an H and the letter H is also in the English word light, L-I-G-H-T. And it's the same symbol both times. And there's the T in light matching up with the T in path. That's lovely. Blue devastation. What does that say? Devastation. It says, it says devastation. That is so cool. Blue yin yang. What an awesome font. We've got the same stuff in red and in yellow. So, you know, if you want to take that and change those around, you can do that too. We've got animated fonts, I should say. They're not, they're, they're, they're it's a font, but I mean, they're animated phrases. Life and death decals and then decals too. It looks like we just have blue and they're just going to be these symbols, which look really nice. We have prefab swords as well. Um, I would venture to guess that these are for your convenience, but they're wildly different swords that are made with the assets given here. Okay, so I think I know how this was done. We're just going to take a look at the common events here. Go straight to the common events menu on the left and then open up common events. And then we have play, player change motion, which I did not care for. My my own character changing graphics 80 times. Uh, but random swords function, this here, this is really cool. There, it's changing the sub graphics, number one, two, three, and four on the player. That's what event sheet one is doing. Event sheet two is assigning random numbers one through 74 to the number numerical integer variable blades random one through 59 to grip random and then one through 53 to guard random so we have 53 times 59 times 74 53 times 59 times 74 combinations of sword you can have 231,000 unique swords that is before we even get into the decals and the potential to edit the decals and so that's what this DLC comes with. It comes with 230,000 swords. <laughs> sort of. Sort of. Sword of? All right, that's good enough for me, I think. Uh, weirdest DLC I've ever reviewed. Weirdest one I've ever presented. Is this going to be for everybody? No. Is this a pretty cool idea? Yes. I hope they expand on this a little bit more. Do the same thing with shields. Do the same thing with guns. Do the same thing with lances axes, hammers, whips, just every weapon type. Although I do think uh, this price tag is going to be very prohibitive for a lot of people, even people who really, really want to support this sort of content. So I hope despite the hard work that has went into this pack, they can kind of see the value of maybe taking several weapon types and putting it into a single DLC at the cost of nothing. Keep it, keep it just as expansive here as it is, because I think that's going to make the value more than just one type of uh, one type of weapon, which arguably you could still call this multiple types of weapons. You could say that they're straight swords, curved swords, great swords and the like. You could change the scales of everything that's going on in here to make different sized blade weapons so you have your great swords you have your daggers and everything in between but anyway that's my presentation i hope you enjoyed it comment anything you like down below and i'll see you in the next video until then have a great rest of your day and bye for now